Good afternoon. My name is Eliseo Munoz. I'm convening this meeting, 530, 4th of April. This is a regular called meeting of the Brownsville Independent School District. Could we all please rise for a moment of silence? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Aguilar, would you lead us in the pledges, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas flag. Thank you. Would the uh, board secretary please call uh, roll? Present. I don't know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Wait for your picture. I got it with a picture. <laughs> right? You can't, they never know how it is, right? <laughs> Thank you. We have a quorum. Uh, absent tonight is Board President uh, Patrick Lehman. He's not going to be able to join us. So uh, we will uh, endeavor to, to get along without him tonight. Item number five, Roman numeral five, recommend approving the agenda of the regular board meeting of April 4th, 2006, with any corrections. Dr. Zolkowski. Munoz, under personnel matters, item A25 will not be addressed in tonight's meeting. That's number A25, will not be addressed. That's all. Thank you. Item six, uh, recommend. Sorry. Uh, we have to. Sorry. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, motion. I move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Carries. I'm sorry. Uh, item six, recommend approving the minutes of the regular board meeting of March 21st, 2006, with any corrections. Are there any corrections? Do I have a motion? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Item 7, superintendent's report, conference presentation. Item number 1, recognition of the 2005-2006 BISD Spelling Bee winners. Dr. Zolkowski. Mr. President, school board members, we're going to honor our Spelling Bee winners, and I'm going to have Jeannie Sterling help me with it. Dr. Zolkowski, members of the Board of Trustees, it's our pleasure to present winners of the BISD Spelling Bee and the Regional Spelling Bee. The BISD Spelling Bee was held on February 11, 2005, 2006 at Paredes Elementary. Uh, before I introduce the winners, I'd like to add that the Spelling Bee would not have been as successful without the support of many individuals, including the parents, sponsors, and campus administrators, and I'd really like for them to stand and be recognized at this time. Some are standing up around the back of the room. Um, participants, would you please stand to be recognized? One of our contestants could not go to the regional spelling bee, and so uh, we had an alternate. That alternate was Larib Safir from Oliveira. Uh, and then in eighth place, Marisa Rodriguez from Egley Elementary. Sarah Olivares from Gallegos Elementary. Thank you. Thank you. 
Number six was Blessing Taklabau from Vela Middle School. <laughs> Patty Hinojosa from Falk Middle School. <laughs> and Stephanie Salazar from Pettis was fourth place. <laughs> Christopher Green from Stell Middle School was second runner-up. First runner-up was Eddie Chavez from Russell Elementary. And the finalist and champion of the BISD Spelling Bee for 2006 was Martha Huerta from Perkins. At the Regional Spelling Bee, Blessing Taklabau won third place. We were very proud of her. Would you like to shake the board members' hands? Participants, thank you. Congratulations. 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 Good job. Congratulations. Congratulations. That concludes this year's BISD Spelling Bee presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item two, uh, section seven, item two, recognition of Rio Grande Valley Regional History Day winners. I believe there's 60. Yes, um, hopefully they all showed up. We're real proud of our history program. Not only did we have the, this year, the Palo Alto experience, but we've also had had great luck. We've sent more people uh, on in this contest than any other ones we've even started. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Fernando Pena. Mr. Munoz, uh, Dr. Salkowski, and members of the Board of Trustees and uh, BIC administrators, it is my pleasure to present to you the winners of the Rio Grande Valley History Day winners. I would like to mention that out of the 80 students from the region that are advancing to the state competition, 60 of these students are from BISD. I would like to mention, and this is very important, that this competition would not be possible or successful without the support of a, a lot of individuals, like Ms. Sterling was saying during the Spelling Bee presentation. Uh, same thing in this case, we would like to recognize the parents the campus sponsors, many of them uh, are here with their students, and of course the administrators for their support and, and supporting history day you know, every, every year since we've had it in Brownsville. So I would like to ask these parents, sponsors, and administrators to please stand so we can recognize them. At this time, we would like to invite the junior division winners to please go before the Board of Trustees. And I would also ask that you please, uh, the audience, save your applause until all students have been recognized. I would like to begin with the uh, first category, the historical paper from uh, Stell Middle School. And all of these students, like I said, are advancing to state. We have Nadia Gonzalez in the uh, individual exhibit from Oliveira Middle School. We have Amber Rodriguez. And in this same category from Bella Middle School, we have Taylor Stockton. In the group exhibit from Stell Middle School, we have Monica Telam, Irene Cortez, Hans Duarte, and Alan Hurtado. 
In the group exhibit, also from Stillman Middle School, we have Virginia Science, Elia Rios, Javier Rivera, and Rodrigo Tostado. In the individual performance from Stell Middle School, we have Pablo Muñiz, and also from Stell Middle School, we have Conrado Gonzalez. In the group performance from Garcia Middle School, we have Carla Vasquez, we have Daisy Reina, Alice De La Rosa, Cynthia Becerra, and Virginia Aguirre. Also from Garcia Middle School in the group performance category, we have Samantha Maldonado, Martini Nojosa, Leslie Flores, Cristina Valencia, and Noah Solis. In the individual media presentation category from Oliveira, we have Alexander Campos. And from Lucio Middle School, in this category, we have Chris Polanco. In the group media presentation category from Lucio Middle School, we have Leonel Villarreal, Jaime Mendoza, and Alvaro Herrera. From Falk Middle School, in the group media presentation, we have Megan Ferreira and Jasmine Hernandez. And in the individual website category from Stell Middle School, we have Omar Blanco, and we have from Lucio Middle School, Raul Manny Garcia. I would also like to recognize in the district, we piloted a group website category, and these are the students that, who came in first and second respectively. From Lucio Middle School, Tina Gonzalez, Hernan Sandoval, and Michelle Garcia. And also from Lucio Middle School in the group website category, Pablo Gonzalez, Rene Grimaldo, Chris Martinez, and Felipe Cantu. Let's recognize all of our junior division winners. And we would ask them, we would invite them to start shaking hands, please, with the administrators and the Board of Trustees. Excellent. Congratulations, young man. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. Excellent. Congratulations. Good job, guys. Good job. Excellent, ma'am. Congratulations. Hey, guys. Congratulations. Keep it up, guys. Keep it up. Next year, we'll do it again. Those ladies. Congratulations. Congratulations, ma'am. Congratulations. Good job, guys. Congratulations. And now I would like to recognize the senior division winners. These are high school students that will be advancing to the state competition as well for participating in History Day. If they could please line up. Students, if you can stand in, in front of the, the board of trustees, just like the middle school students, thank you. Again, I'm gonna start off with the uh, historical paper category from Hannah High School. Uh, John Barone, and also in the historical paper category from Hannah High School, Cindy Lynn Salazar. In the individual exhibit category from Hannah, Jacqueline Pack. In the group exhibit category from Hannah High School, Janelle Lumang, Sheena Hernandez, Sunny Park, and Maya Garcia. In the group exhibit from Pace High School, Marisa Miranda, Melissa Barrera, Ashley Garza, Lisa Rodriguez, and Gwen Vendell. In the individual media category from Lopez High School, Joey Centeno. In the group media presentation category from Hannah High School, Alan Tulos, Marcus Ayala, Amanda Padilla, Allison Hawkins, and Kimberly Pardo. In the group media presentation from Lopez High School, Navil Rodriguez, Devon Hernandez, Lorena Zamora, Lidia Villegas. And in the individual performance category from Hannah High School, Madeline Timpton. And the final category for the senior division, group performance from Lopez High School, Joshua Pineda, Jose Emilio Banda, Elizabeth Renfro, Valeria Vera, and Elisa Nino. Let's give these students a big hand, please.
Congratulations. 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 Good job, guys. Congratulations. 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 Good job. Congratulations. I would just like to add that all of these students will be competing at the state level on April 28th and 29th, and we wish them luck, and we know they'll do great. This concludes our presentation of the Rio Grande Valley Regional History Day winners. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, presentation item number three, presentation on the proclamation recognizing April 2006 as National Autism Awareness Month. Dr. Zolkowski. Uh, it's a great pleasure that, that uh, we have a proclamation I'd like to read to the board. I know we will take action on this, I believe, under item eight later, but I'd like to read it uh, because it's National Autism Awareness Month. Whereas autism is a lifelong development disability resulting in significant impairment of the individual's ability to learn, develop healthy interactive behaviors, and understand verbal, nonverbal, and reciprocal communication, and whereas autism is the third most common development disability affecting more than a half a million individuals nationwide and approximately 117 BISD students, and whereas autism is the result of neurological disorder affecting the functioning of the brain, but few members of the general public understand this complex syndrome. And whereas a cure for autism has not yet been found, persons with autism can be helped to reach their greatest potential through accurate early diagnosis and appropriate education and interventions that are vital to the future growth and development of the individual. Whereas groups such as the BISD Special Services Parent Support Group, campus teachers, staff, and administrators have dedicated years of service to advocate for the rights, humane treatment, and appropriate education of all persons with autism. Now, therefore, I, Dr. Zolkowski, Superintendent of the Brownsville Independent School District, by the virtue of authority vested in me by affirmative vote of the Board of Trustees and on behalf of the entire community, do hereby recognize April 2006 as National Autism Awareness Month in the Brownsville Independent School District signed this fourth day of April 2006. Thank you, Dr. Z. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, moving on, item four, presentation conference, presentation of the notification of betterment fund change order and contract change order. Dr. Z. Uh, we just have a credit. Uh, we're finishing up the project. Hector had put it together, and uh, we're getting a, a 50682 Thank you. Item B, standing board agenda items, board calendars. Dr. Z. We have a busy, busy month in April and May, and, and we work uh, morning, noon, morning, night, and day. But um, we've taken the fifth grade math tax, and uh, there's the makeup sessions uh, tomorrow, the 6th. Uh, the National School Board Convention, uh, which the majority of the board members will be attending, is this weekend and part of next. Uh, we have a DEIC on Monday at 5.30. Uh, we are off for Good Friday. We're not off for Easter Monday. We have a regular board meeting on the 18th at 5.30. On the 22nd, we have our golf scholarship tournament. Hopefully this year we'll raise $60,000 for our high school seniors. Uh, last year we raised uh, 45000 May 1st is a teacher appreciation day. There is no school. Uh, we'll have a few people working, but, but we're off on Monday. Tuesday, we have a regular board meeting at 5.30. On the 3rd, we have the BISD Employee Award Night at Jacob Brown Memorial Center. Uh, on the 6th, we have the 34th Annual Elementary Field Day Fun Meet at, at Sam Stadium for all of our elementary schools. On the 9th, actually, is National Teacher Day. Uh, the 10th is National School Nurse Day. 
And on the 11th, we have the top 5% picnic uh, at the encampment. And the 13th, we have our bond election. Um, on the 16th, we have a regular board meeting. On the 28th, we have high school baccalaureate. And then the six weeks ends on May 31st. Thank you, Dr. Zink. Susan, just go on. Yeah, I did want to mention that we also have our tax uh, the week of, of next week right after Easter. And uh, just really wanted to thank the teachers for putting a lot of effort into their classes and hope the students really come through and do their best. Thank, thank you. you. Thank I'll you. share that with our staff. Anyone else? Thank you. Item B, I'm sorry, uh, item Roman numeral 8, public audience. The next item on our agenda, item 8, is the public comment period. This is the time for citizen staff or students to provide their comments to the board. Statements and questions from the audience will not be permitted during other portions of the meeting. So please let us hear from you now if you have any comments to present. To have your comments heard tonight, your name and the subject matter of your comments must appear on the sign-in sheet, which is located in the rear of the meeting room. It was located. It's up here now. Each speaker will be limited to five minutes to complete his or her comments. With all due courtesy, I will strictly enforce that time limit. If a group of people want to be heard on the same subject, the board asks that they designate a spokesman to avoid needless repetition. The board has adopted rules to preclude the abuse of open forum by, for example, anyone needlessly, uselessly repeating the same comment or, or complaint meeting after meeting. All participants Participants must understand that if your comment, in my judgment, constitutes a complaint against an employee or officer, I will interrupt and ask you to stop and to direct you to proceed with the BISD's formal grievance procedures, be that DGBA, FNG, or GF local. With these cautions in mind, we will now be glad to hear from the general comments. Uh, first, first person on the list. And uh, we're going to have to, uh, because of the number of speakers, we're going to have to r uh, restrain this at, at three minutes apiece, please. First, Beto Medrano, Mr. Albert Medrano. Albert Medrano, twice. Beto is not here. No show. No show. Uh, second uh, person, Dave Loberg. I apologize, I had this ready for five minutes, for actually six minutes you told me to begin with, so I'm going to try to cut it to three. My name is Dave Loberg. I'm a social studies teacher at Hannah High School. I thank you for this chance uh, to give my opinions here this evening. You'll have four minutes. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, I've met Dr. Zolikowski and find him to be a man of integrity, and I, I'm sure when he suggests a six-period teaching day for core teachers, he really believes it's in the best interest of BISD. But, Doctor, I disagree with you, and I'm going to give you four reasons why. First of all, I think it's detrimental to recruitment and retention of teachers. We're, we're living in a time of a teacher shortage, and every school district in Texas is competing for the best and the brightest teachers. In the Valley, for instance, some of our competitors, such as Harlingen and McAllen, already pay somewhat more than us. And if this goes through, they're also going to work less than us. So where are our best and brightest teachers going to go? Plus the fact you can look at a lot of the core teachers, uh, non-core teachers, excuse me, are already uh, applying to other districts. This might have a, a, a snowball effect. Other people might retire earlier than they planned. I don't think it's a good idea. Secondly, teacher morale is pretty low now because of the six periods we're given to non-core teachers, and it's going to bottom out if this happens. Uh, s some people, well, excuse me. Uh, we sent people all over the state to study scheduling. It's th thousands of dollars of the taxpayers' money. And it wasn't a bad idea. I mean, there's wisdom in them all through the council. The Bible states that. But nobody came to the high schools to talk to us. We should have been the very first people to talk to. I've talked to people from every high school, and not one single person I've talked to is in favor of teaching more. I mean, who would be? I, I don't see it's a good idea for, for anyone. I've taught for 30 years, 24 years here in Brownsville. I've done my practice teaching in Wisconsin. I've taught in Illinois, California, and Guatemala. And no high school I've ever been in has ever taught more than five classes. It hasn't been done. It's just bad for morale. I'm sorry. Number three, the way things will be. 
not the way it's perceived to be from here in the glass palace, but the way things are actually going to happen as we know it. Uh, teachers will adjust, sure will adjust, but it's just human nature. It's not we got bad teachers, but what's going to happen, people are going to give book assignments like open your book to chapter 16, read the chapter, do the questions at the end, because I need to do grading. Uh, you're going to get more absenteeism because people are going to be stressed out. I've got 192 days going into this year. I've very seldom taken a day. But I can see some stress-related days going to, I'm going to need. Uh, there's going to be less written work and what, when, when kids need more. It's going to be bad for kids. And, and it's written work that's done. There's going to be more superficial grading. That's actually what's going to happen. Excuse me for rushing through this, but the, other, the last point I wanted to make is the possible political ramifications of this. Because this affects us an awful lot, people. And it affects the students even more. But it, it also could affect you somewhat. Years ago, uh, Rene Oliveira, you remember our state representative, voted for TCAT. Uh, he didn't talk to many teachers before he made that vote. And teachers got really upset and voted him out of office the very next election. Well, he came back, and he's been one of the best legislators we have in favor of education today. Now, this, this, this is, I know it's not a vote. You're, you're talking about administrative decision, but you can't just wash your hands like Pontius Pilate here of this and say that because the, the superintendent serves at the discretion of the board. So you do have a lot of pull. You, you stopped it last year. I ask you to please stop it again this year. And let me leave you with one final comment. If you do, if you do really feel that six periods is in the best interest of the school, well, go for it. I'll promise I'll do my best, whatever happens. But if you do want to give us an extra 20% workload, are you also willing to give us a 20% pay raise? Thank you. Dr. Madrano, Hannah. Thank you, sir. Um, I just want to say on behalf of the Hannah faculty, haven't been there before, have been there uh, with them all the time, that uh, we usually don't cry wolves or don't complain unless it really hurt us. And I know all those people at, at uh, Hannah are really hurting now, along with the others, uh, teachers there, or in, even in middle school, they're hurting because I think... Uh, I don't have my clear records here with me, but some uh, classrooms, some middle schools have six periods, some have five. If you haven't checked that out, I wish you would. If you want to call me a liar, go ahead and, and do that outside. Don't, don't do it publicly. Uh, but uh, I do believe that, uh, that that's going on, and uh, I do believe that in one high school, they're getting paid extra. And if you've done your homework, uh, Mr. Chairman, Acting Chairman, uh, which you always do, you ought to know that that's the truth. And I don't care who, I don't even know the uh, AAs in that one. AA should be working with the faculty and uh, uh, making sure that uh, they get all the squares together and, and uh, all the circles together. Because this is uh, an unjust, what you're doing here. It, it, carries on to the, uh, it carries on to the children. The children, the students uh, will uh, not like that. And they have to get more grades. And they have to get, teachers have to grade more. And then, consequently, the parents get into it. They get upset. When they get home, they kick the dog. And, and you're psychologists. you psychologists. You ought to know what the, what the dog uh, will do. And, and then it's just a round cycle, round and round type of thing. And uh, the other thing I was going to cut, and I was going to cut it short, that summer programs for the youth, we ought to be working on something like that instead of cutting out the teachers uh, having to do extra work. We need to address that. Uh, I'll be working with the uh, city and the county, and hopefully you all can lend me your ears, and maybe we can come up with a summer youth employment program that we used to have it in the 70s. And uh, we find jobs for these kids, even just a little part-time job. We address that to the freshman dropouts, and you'd be surprised how many we could keep in there. We had it for the entire county back then, and it was really working out. I had to travel least, uh, a lot less uh, trips to Gatesville when we were doing that, and uh, and I know it works because I've been there. I've been I've done it as director of youth programs for Cameron County. I've done it as a probation officer, and I feel we can do it again. And uh, I just hope you do the right thing with the Hannah teachers. Not only the Hannah, but uh, the others. The, the others are afraid to to speak. Hannah has never been afraid to speak out because we have about three or four. They're almost going to be attorneys, and uh, and those that uh, that uh, have a lot of days off uh, will take him. 
they, they will take him. Uh, like I never took a day off before I had a heart attack. I had uh, thousands of uh, day offs and then until I had the heart attack and, and the neuropathy in my legs that when I was at boot camp, uh, teachers don't want to take days off. I, I never known of one that intentionally want to take day off. And uh, with that in mind, I tell you, do the right thing. Those of you that have been in education before, what did I tell you the last time? You've not been in education, not been in the classroom. Sometimes you don't need to serve. We don't need to have teachers. We need to have uh, people that have not been in the classroom, and, and I, I'm not counting on, uh, on the ones that have been. And uh, Otis and I talked, and I said, I didn't really mean him because he has a, a sister and, and family member, superintendent, principal. So he, he, knows, he knows what to do when it's going gets tough. He's going to back the teachers up. You wait and see. He always gives us salaries. He's always out there for sick leave. He's always out there for the best. And if Mr. Aguilar can join him, we got two there, and, uh, and Mr. Colunga and Mr. Escobedo. Uh, I know that Mr. Munoz will not uh, uh, help us because he, he thinks the teachers are making too much money anyway. So uh, th with, with that in mind, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that uh, you didn't cut me off. Uh, <laughs> Albert, I probably should have. I probably should have, Albert. Next, next uh, speaker is Kathleen Jimenez. Kathleen Jimenez. Recognition of SFL units. Good evening, Dr. Zolkowski, Mr. Munoz, and members of the board. I am Kathleen Jimenez, Special Education Supervisor, and I'm representing Special Services in recognizing April as Nation National Autism Awareness Month. We are excited to share information with the community and district staff about autism and to celebrate our students with autism through a variety of activities. If you'll turn to page 27, there are a list of, what, um, of some of the activities we're offering for this month. Also um, placed beside your paperwork are some ribbons that represent autism. Um, I thank you and invite you to wear those ribbons during the month of April to support our students. We would like to kick off this special month by recognizing administrators, teachers, and paraprofessionals from the three schools who have piloted the Structure for Life classrooms this school year. The successes and educational progresses of so many of the students in those units with autism are attributed to these wonderful people. So if they would please come up front, I'd like to recognize them. From Hudson Elementary, I'd like to recognize Dr. Cantu, the principal of the school, Christine Wirt, the teacher, Elva Garcia, Laura Castillo, and Leona Tawako, the paraprofessionals. From Garden Park, I'd like to recognize Mr. Garza, principal, pa Pam Downing, the teacher, Rosa Pena, Billy Salazar, Esme Medrano and Alex Garcia, the paraprofessionals. From Morningside, I'd like to recognize Mr. Corkill, the principal. Frank Castillo, the teacher. Nancy Garcia and Maria Chasco. And I'd like to recognize Manuel Rocha, our behavior specialist and in-home parent trainer for the district. We truly appreciate these people, and I would love for everyone to give them one more hand. Or, thank you. Thank you for the excellent work, man. Appreciate that. Thank you for the good work. Thank you for the excellent work. Appreciate that. Excellent. Thank you for the good work, man. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you, Mrs. Jimenez. We do appreciate you, the group's efforts. Our next speaker is Orlando Trevino, who has some general comments. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Orlando Trevino. Mr. Acting uh, uh, President, Mr. Munoz, rest of the board members, administration, and the public. It's been a long time since I've been here. The only time I show up when I think there's something going wrong. I've always, I've always believed in our teachers, and I've always believed in our students, I've always believed in our parents, and I've always believed in our community. <coughs> By rescheduling and adding a sixth period, you're creating a lot of problems. You're creating a teacher who's going to have to have more time to grade all those papers. They got their own kids. They're not going to have enough time for their own kids. You got the student who's already uh, taking assessments tests. He's having that extra class. Now he's going to have to worry about taking, uh, passing six classes in the assessment test. When I was going to high school, and the majority of you were going to high school, we had no problems. We took the, all those classes, but we didn't have an assessment test. When we graduated, we graduated. One of the main things that you're going to create, and I will go against anybody on that one, the one thing that you're going to create, you're going to create a lot of people having uh, high blood pressure. You're going to have a lot of people having stress, and that goes for the students as well as the teachers. You're going to have the parents who are not going to have the time to help those students. We're always uh, stating the parents need to get more involved. Well, the parents are already having enough problems with uh, what the kids have right now. What are we trying to do to the employees? Are we trying to demoralize them to the point that they're not going to help you all no more? They're the front line. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, they're the front line. They're the ones that protect you and protect our children. They're the ones that teach our children. When you put them to a level where they're going to be missing because of uh, whatever stress or whatever, then you're going to have a substitute. A substitute does not teach as a regular teacher. He's in there just to, he's, a, he's got a copy of a list of, okay, this is what you're going to do. Then you've got 25, 30 students. Okay, you cannot take, there's no way you could take even a minute and a half for a student that uh, doesn't understand a problem, whether it's this or that. Because if you multiply that times 30 kids, the classes are 45 minutes. Five minutes of that is for the kids to prepare to get out of class. Five minutes is to take roll call. That gives you 35 minutes. And I'm sorry to tell you, I'm not a math wizard, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to say we don't have enough time as it is. These, pe uh, these teachers have done everything for you. You're putting them to the point that I'm sorry to say, they're not going to work for you. And when they don't work for you, it's going to kill the parents. And when it kills the parents, it's going to kill the community. And, and you all sitting up there are the ones that are going to get affected because you all do have a right to make a decision to say no. Our, the people right here, take a look at it. I don't care what anybody says. They're stressed out. I've seen a lot of teachers, they're stressed out. I've seen a lot of students, they're stressed out. We cannot add any more stress. And as far as the bond issue, I'm glad that you split it up. We do need a high school. But we're, not, we're losing so many teachers, we're so, losing so, many, so much manpower. Not only for one reason, because they're being underpaid. But the second thing, the reason that we're losing them is because we're adding a workload that they cannot handle. I'm sorry to tell you, they cannot handle when, when you got to have a teacher not only prepare to teach those six classes, but also to prepare to teach assessment. There's no way you can do two things. And it's like a car. You run it too, too much, too fast, it's going to break down. Thank you very much. Next speaker, next speaker is, I believe, Juanita Rodriguez, is that correct? Good evening. I'm here 
as a taxpayer. I'm here as a citizen, but I am not here as an employee of BISD. But far more than anything else, I'm here as a parent. Speaking in behalf of my son, because my son has a severe disability, and because of his disability, he's not able to communicate what he wants to address. And I apologize if I get emotional. On April the 1st, my son competed in the Special Olympics at Sam Stadium. My son competed in the 50 yard uh, meter and he won third place. But for some reason or another, by mistake of human error or mistake of someone that was not paying attention or maybe it was not directly correctly, my son was given a first place medal, which he did not earn and which he did not deserve. At the time, there were several parents that were there that witnessed this and were very concerned. I was approached by many parents very upset that my son was being given favoritism. And in no way was my son given favoritism. I addressed this with a supervisor. I addressed it with the special ed director. And I pleaded with her Mr. to Munoz, please make that Mr. correction. Munoz, I think we have a, a violation here in that uh, we have I did not uh, mention I, any I names. I just said the supervisor. Really identifiable as far as. I did as, not uh, mention any names, but I do need to let them let you all know that who was a person this that I directed myself to to correct that issue. Is it was not corrected. And my son still as of today has not been able to receive his medal. Mrs. He's Rodriguez. still waiting for the medal. Mrs. And Rodriguez. I am pleading here with the board to please, please, Dr. Sakowski, you are Rodriguez. responsible for this. I am asking you to please, if you are investigating and finding out what happened that Saturday morning, I am asking you to please give my son the medal that he deserves. Okay? That's all I'm asking here and that's all I'm here for. Thank you, Mrs. Rodriguez. Thank you for your time and thank you. I hope that you all have a conscience and you look into what you have done and what the people in this district have thank done you, to my son. Thank you. Take a good look at my son. Next speaker, I believe, is uh, Kathy Garcia. <laughs> Kathy Garcia. Next speaker is uh, Albert Alegria. Mr. Alegria, going to speak on some concerns he has. Good evening, members of the board, President Munoz, Dr. Slokowski, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alberto Alegria, the proud president of the Association of Brownsville Educators, 1,609 members strong. We are concerned and perplexed that administration continues the attempt at a very crucial time bond, during the bond propositions to promote the idea that if core teachers in the high school and the middle school teach six periods instead of five, that the tax scores will increase. Well, if you teach eight periods, I can also guarantee that the tax scores will go up. However, who's going to teach them? When are teachers going to plan? Teachers in the core area and non-core area are exhausted, and the time they have for student instruction is getting more demanding in regards to the tax exam. At this time, I'd like to pass out a handout. Mr. Williams? In, in front of you is an overview of what a teacher does on a daily basis. We hope you take time to reacquaint yourself of their workload and make a justifiable and informative decision. We, the Association of Brownsville Educators, have a solution and are willing to sit with administration as soon as possible so that we may find common ground instead of mistrust and disc discontent within the district. Thank you, Mark. Tonight, I bring a message from all of VIZ transportation employees. Your attention and consideration would be highly appreciated if the district can accommodate them for summer employment this year. Summertime is downtime for campuses in this district. We, the Association of Brownsville Educators, believe that the transportation employees can help or assist maintenance employees to better prepare campuses for the coming school year. Manpower is a main component of readiness and efficiency. Every year, 
we noticed more maintenance employees working in a frenzy trying to prepare the schools. This district would benefit by satisfying maintenance requests and completing jobs on a timely fashion. By allowing transportation employees to work the summer would actually save money but by not paying overtime and it reduces pressure on maintenance when the school year starts. We, the Association of Brownsville Educators, recommends to the administration and the school board to possibly look into, the, into permanently allowing transportation employees to work every summer so that job uncertainty and anxiety will not permeate throughout the year. Student-led parent-teacher conferences. Brownsville Independent School District is taking the appropriate steps to ensure student success. Our requirement on portfolios on each student in each subject is cutting edge in keeping solid data in each student at their work and their performing habits. All the same, this resource could be used to our advantage to increase student performance and parental involvement by incorporating a new element to the student accountability. Student-led parent-teacher conferences are the next step in encouraging students to reflect on their work and be accountable for their learning. It also increases the amount of information shared with parents when it comes to their student progress and lessens the stress of setting up communication systems with parents for teachers. If used properly, student-led conferences can greatly change the parental involvement of parents in a student's daily schoolwork and increase student commitment and responsibility to school. Bonnet and Mar Marcellus, 1991. Studying-led conferences are becoming a national, uh, let a national trend as schools move more and more towards a student accountability approach. It is understanding these things that we propose that the Brownsville Independent School District explore the possibilities of altering their course schedule slightly in order to accommodate the implementation and trial of a student-directed conference system for next year. Evidence of success. Quote, this practice is the biggest breakthrough in communicating about student achievement in the last century, unquote, says Richard Stiggins, expert on student assessment, author and head of the Assessment Training Institute in Portland, Oregon. Technicalities. Student-led conferences happen between two and four times yearly. School is canceled two days for mandatory conferences with all parents. Parents sign up for a student-parent-teacher conference. With, with school canceled, there is much more flexibility in scheduling as the day can run into evening and or the weekend to allow maximum parental participation. We need the participation of parents so that our students are given the full opportunity to succeed. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you, Mr. Alegria. Final speaker tonight will be uh, George Borrego, miscellaneous items. Mr. Borrego. Always save the best for last. Uh, Item number one, what is the status of our satellite bus station? Gas costs continue to rise, and I don't want my pay raise going into the gasoline pump for transportation. I hope we're still looking at that issue and uh, working to resolve it because gasoline is scheduled to go to $3 a gallon. By the way, the stock for Valero went up 81 cents yesterday. Hello. They're taking us to the cleaners. Item number two, I urge administration and the board to be cognizant of our teachers, our workload, our stress level. Four of you have been in the classroom. Please remember the classroom and when you were there. We have a speech teacher who is non-core at Porter who has 191 students, six classes. That's not right, it's not right. In fact, I think our non-core teachers should go back to five periods so we can have equity, so that we can have equity with our peers. Uh, finally, I have good news. I'm in receipt of a letter which I'm going to read to you and I hope I don't go over my three 
minutes. Uh, it's made out to Mr. Borrego. That sounds good. It's in reference to the bond issue. Dear Mr. Borrego, may the Lord Jesus grant you peace. Thank you for your kind communication of March the 24th, 2006, in which you detail the breakdown of funds that will be generated by the proposed bond issue scheduled for public vote on May the 13th. Based on the information provided, i.e. current and projected enrollment, IFA contribution, which refers to the state paying 75 cents for every qu uh, quarter that we put in, low tax rate, etc. I expect all men and women of goodwill to support this measure in favor of public education. The Roman Catholic Church in the United States has a long and venerable history of advocating for the educational development of the human person. In the city of Brownsville, the headquarters of the diocese which I shepherd, there are thousands of committed educators, facilitators, and administrators who devote their lives to the academic formation of the younger generations. These professionals and the students in their charge must be equipped with a proper environment that is condu conducive to teaching and learning. New or upgraded facilities are a necessity, not a luxury, and one that we as a community can rally behind. The lives of our children, the future of our city, demand it, and we ought to do all in our power to improve their state in life. In closing, I wish you and all of our friends at the Brownsville Independent School District every success with this bond issue. May you be rewarded for your efforts on behalf of the children and youth of Brownsville. Asking the Lord to bless you and all who labor in the field of publication, I remain, remain sincerely in Christ, Bishop Raimundo Peña. He's well connected. With this letter, I think we got a chance. We got a good chance. In fact, coming to mind, I've been working the streets. That doesn't sound right. 15 seconds. For the bond issue, because I know it's, it's critical, it's very important. I have only run across two people whose names I will not mention that have been against it. And I have run across a lot more that are for it. We need to get out the vote. By the way, the Ten Brownsville seconds. Union Coalition is going to have a rally on May the 6th at the Ringle Park to get out the vote. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Moving on with the agenda, we're at item nine, Roman numeral nine, consent agenda. I've received a list from my colleagues indicating that there will be no need for discussion or deliberation on the following agenda items. <laughs> item six, uh, section A, item six. Item eight, section B, item nine. Section C, item 10, 11, and 12. Section D, Item 14, uh, and uh, we will discuss all the other items. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the recommended recommendation of administration. I'll second. It's been uh, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. First item on the agenda is item 7. Recommend approval to declare obsolete equipment as surplus to be sold by public auction on Saturday, April 22, 2006. Do I have a motion? I move to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Do we have discussion? Mrs. Galvan? Yes, um, on the items that are obsolete and surplus, I was noticing on the computer equipment, there were uh, CPUs, 788 CPUs, uh, even monitors are over a thousand. And um, I was just wondering what, if there, for possibly future or 
or to take into consideration um, them being used as word processors for students that possibly need computers. I don't, I don't know how, how unusable they are. That would be interesting to find out. But I do know that we have a lot of students out there that do not have um, computers and, and uh, possibly parents at our parent centers. But uh, if, if it could be possible that we could have computers in use or, or looked at uh, for other use rather than just to be used as obsolete or surplus equipment, uh, we do have the need out there. Mr. Mr. Munoz, um, board members, um, <coughs> I've asked a question of, uh, of uh, Robert Fisher because when we take these computers to the auction, um, he has first shot at it. And so I'm going to let Robert explain to you what we go through uh, before the audit. Go ahead, Robert. Thank you, sir. Mr. Munoz, Dr. Zolkowski, members of the board. Uh, Ms. Galvan, the computers that we have um, going to the auction at the warehouse have not only gone beyond their useful life insofar as hand-me-down. Um, I, I say the word hand-me-down because nine times out of ten new computers are, are distributed out to the high schools primarily uh, for the use of uh, the, the newest and latest of greatest of technologies. Um, once those technologies or once those computers have gone beyond their useful life, a lot of times those machines get relocated possibly to a middle school to enhance their learning education. They may definitely meet the needs for a lot of the softwares that they run. As the term of years go by or, or months go by, if those machines are deemed, again, to be beyond the useful life of the middle schools, they get moved down to the elementary schools. Um, once they get down to the elementary schools, then they obviously get modified all the way down to the pre-K, like you were suggesting a moment ago, to, to be used for heartbeeps, accelerated reader, for any kind of diskette type of ABC123 softwares that we have to provide. Once they go there, we find that many of those machines that are going to the auction um, are costing the district more to try to maintain than it is to save. So in many cases, what happens on the days like tonight for the auction um, we make sure that we go to those machines. They're, they're beyond their useful life. They do not work, but there are parts inside that still do. We take hard drives, we take memory, we take processors, things that we know that are still workable out of those machines, and try to supplement those machines we still have in use, in most cases in the elementary school, to, to prolong the life of those used machines, if you will, or to upgrade them to be able to access those new softwares that are coming out for the pre-K or or first or second grades. But primarily, the, the machines that go to auction, in my opinion, don't have much of a dollar value. I, I hope to say that not any of them will work because we try to salvage or at least save the district those tax dollars and try to relocate those hardware devices that are still operational into existing machines that are no longer under warranty. I, I, don't, I hope that that helped answer some of the questions. Mr. Fisher? I, was, uh, I just had uh, one question. Yeah, they don't even work as word processors? In, in most cases, the motherboards are, are, are gone, ma'am. Hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, my, my question to you was how many, how many of these units are, are usable uh, in some sense as computers, and, and what I'm hearing is, is not very many or, no, or none of them. We, under my direction, the, the gentlemen, all of our technicians, um, we we touch every single machine that goes to the auction. We remove out of those machines that we know where they're no longer usable or they wouldn't be there, we remove those items that we know that are still deemed necessary to sustain the lives of those machines that we still have out there throughout the district. So you're pulling the CPUs, the hard drives, and the memory out of them? Yes, sir. What else? Video cards, sound cards, um, floppy drives, in some case DVD drives that still work in some of the older machines when they were brand new. Um, they integrated with the sound card. Um, Creative Labs used to make a lot of CD-ROMs that ran directly off of the sound cards. They're still usable in a lot of machines that we have that are beyond their useful, uh, beyond their warranty life, if I will. Well, I can I can understand uh, uh, cannibalizing some machines, but uh, if we're doing it as a matter of course, then we're in essence destroying hundreds of machines. Oh, I'm not. I'm not doing it just because of. I'm doing it because we can actually use all those parts in, inside machines that we existingly have. 
Um, I, I find that the value that we're getting out of these selling five pallets of CPUs, I, I, I know for a fact that uh, five pallets of CPUs probably go at best at $1,500. I've seen a whole pallet of just CPUs go for $100 or less. In, in, in on the onset, saving the district money in, in using those, those, those materials inside those machines and recirculating those into existing machines to better enhance the machines that we have out there or enhance the machines that we have out there, that's more of a value to the district in, so far as cost savings. <clears throat> okay. And the monitors, what, uh, what's the status of the monitors? Monitors, in some cases, you may find that they're monitors that still work. So we, we do know which ones still work? Obviously, we, we have yes, to know which ones work. Yes, so sir, they will be appropriately marked? Yes, sir, they are. Working and non-working? Yes, sir. Good. So uh, looking at this list, uh, this is going to, this auction will be on uh, Saturday, April 22nd. And uh, I've been to a couple of them, and uh, you can get a lot of bargains there. Uh, we've got cameras. We've got, uh, as, as we just stated, a 1,000 monitors. Uh, probably you're going to be able to pick them up fairly cheap. You might have to buy I guess you'd have to get together and, and buy a pallet of them. Is that is that the way they'll be sold? The actual setup is not under my discretion, but that's usually how it's working, sir. That, All right. that we tried a system a few years back working with uh, Mr. Whittemore and the fixed asset gentleman to, to palletize systems, but you find that the CPUs, like we I mean the, the, the CPU machines, the actual computer itself, is not usable. So you have a pallet of computers, keyboards that are probably in still some cases usable, but monitors are usable. So you have complete systems that don't work. Okay. So they found, I think that they found that selling monitors by pallet was generating a, a higher dollar value. Well, I think anyone that goes to the auction will be uh, glad that they do. There, there are quite a few things here from desks to uh, kitchen equipment and so on and so forth. Does anyone else have anything? Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Thank you, sir. All in favor of approving this? Opposed? Unanimous. Next item is item 13. Recommend approval to enter into an interlocal agreement between Brownsville ISD and Sable Palms Riding Project at UTB TSC in the amount of $35,000 for the 2005-06 school year. Do I have a motion? I second. Been moved and seconded. Discussion. Uh, Mr. Aguilar? Uh, yes, Mr. Munoz. Uh, first, I want to say that this, this is an excellent program. Uh, what I have some questions, though, is has nothing to do with the program itself. I believe that it's, it is, Dr. Z, a beautiful, uh, very effective program. Uh, I just want to know, uh, I know that it says 40 teachers, K to 12. I wonder, is that evenly distributed in, among elementary, middle school, high school, or is it more weighted towards the high school uh, uh, person, personnel, I just wonder. Uh, that's, that's Dr. Nunes. Good evening, uh, Vice President Munoz, Dr. Sokoski, members of the board. We target our secondary, but it's open to teachers, any teachers who are willing to attend the six week course, I mean, the, sem the summer course, and what they in turn become teacher leaders at the campuses so that we spread the teaching of best practices in writing to all grade levels throughout our district. So, actually, the program is geared to secondary people? Well, it's because we have writing, excuse me, I'm Dr. Sorry. Z, we have writing also in the fourth grade, the right. elementary. Uh, if this to enhance our writing techniques, I would assume that we would also to want to take care of our elementary people. Uh, and I'm glad you said that you use these agents of change to train uh, other teachers, which is, right. is good. It's just like uh, training of trainers, you know, so it's good. So this is what I was wondering, uh, if it's just for secondary people. I know that they get six hours for graduate work. Uh, what about uh, looking at elementary also? Uh, that's just my question I had, and, and perhaps this is not the first year we do it. And I know it has been done in the past, so historically we've been looking at it. So I was just wondering, can we look into this? We, we, we can look into that. We've had this Thank program you. since 1996. Yes, it, it has and been it's, very effective. But we, we have also some New Jersey, I believe, writing projects yes, in uh -huh. the district. So and we have some writing. And actually, we score pretty well in writing yes. uh, in our school district, if you look at the scores comparatively. Uh, which is, is good that we are doing writing, but we will look and see if we can expand it. Thank you, sir. Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Passes unanimous. That being the, uh, the, uh, 
the, the conclusion of, of, of discussion items. We are going into closed meeting pursuant to Texas Government Code, Section 551.071, 551.072, 551.074, also 551.084. We'll be back. Numbers 16 through 24, personnel items. Do I have a motion to uh, approve as discussed? I have a motion, second? I'll, I'll second. All in favor, say aye, please. Aye. aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, item 26, no, nothing, 27, nothing. Uh, do we need to act on 27 on, on the land issues? No. Okay, item 28, uh, announcements, next meeting. Dr. Zolkowski, please. Meeting is April 18th, and we'll be, uh, we have two, two major things we're currently working on, just to let people know. We're working on the, uh, we've been working for the last month on the number of bus drivers we'll be looking at for employment. It'll be a presentation item. And second of all, we'll be naming the new elementary school. And uh, how about, uh, I thought we were bringing back uh, Project Grad? We're still working on that. That's not ready yet. Because okay, you're supposed it's to come back ready. this time. Okay. Anyone have anything? Any announcements? Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? 